Hi guys, I'm back. In this video, we're gonna talk about essential fatty acids. There's just a lot of confusion. I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as possible to sort out um, kind of the big idea of why you need to be consuming these and what might happen if you're deficient. Well, first of all, let's back up. Okay, what is an essential fatty acid? Well, essential meaning that the body cannot make it, okay? Cannot make the, this type of fat, yet you need it. It's essential because without it, you will die. This must be gotten from the diet and also, this category of fats is not just used for energy. It's used to replace body parts. Your brain is mostly fat. Your nervous system is mostly fat. So we need these fats to make up our body. All right, so that's essential fatty acids. Uh, back in 1923 or four, um, essential fatty acids were called vitamin F, okay? but they realized that it's not necessarily a vitamin per se, it's more of a, a fatty acid. So they changed the name. So there's two main categories of essential fatty acids. You have ALA and LA. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky because the names for these are very similar. This one is called alpha linolenic, okay, with an N. This one is just linoleic. So they both have Leno. This one is lenic and this is laic, but they're very similar, so it's kind of confusing. This one is omega 6, okay? And this one is omega 3. So alpha linolenic is omega 3. And by the way, omega basically is used to categorize the, the kind of the form of the fat uh, as far as uh, the different bonds and how it's chemically made up, but it's the, they use the last letter of the Greek alphabet, which is omega. All right, so now that you have that, what type of foods do you have to eat to get this right here? Well, this mainly comes uh, from leafy greens, uh, flax, chia, hemp, seed, plants and nuts, especially walnuts. So we have also this thing called EPA and DHA. These are two additional omega-3 fatty acids. These two come from salmon, especially concentrated in the salmon oil, and cod liver oil, sardines, caviar, which is fish eggs. And by the way, caviar is really good to give females who are preparing their body for pregnancy to increase fertility. It's also good for men to increase their fertility in sperm count and testosterone levels. It just has a lot of nutrients, phytonutrients, and healthy fats. Okay, so we have that, and then seafood, fatty fish, Grass-fed animal products include grass-fed dairy. Um, and by the way, when you consume grass-fed beef, it has a four to one ratio, four times the omega-3 to omega-6, as compared to grain-fed beef has two to one. So grass-fed gives you double the amount of that. So if you notice that these are all kind of animal products, now there are exceptions, you can get DHA, from algae, okay? But typically you're gonna get your DHA and EPA from these uh, animal and fish products right here. Now I just wanna pause uh, for a second on these two fats right here. If you deprive an infant uh, DHA, the IQ will go down. The size of the brain is limited. The child will have stunted growth. Um, the vision will be poor. So we know that DHA and even EPA is essential in brain function and formation, uh, the retina, sex hormones, endocrine function, and many other functions. Okay, so let me just kind of touch on this for a second. If you are a vegan, okay, and you do not consume these right here, and you're not even consuming algae, this has the potential to convert to EPA and DHA, but at a very limited rate. From ALA to EPA is only like a 5% conversion. Going from EPA to DHA, it's zero to 4%. So this is one challenge that a vegan will have in the conversion to these two fats. So it's just one thing to be aware of uh, if you start seeing symptoms of deficiency of uh, these fats right here. Now I'm gonna come back to this for a second, but I'm gonna switch right over to here to LA, which is the omega-6. This is mainly the corn oils, the soy oil, the canola. Now, I don't even want to get into the GMO 
subject right now, but just realize that when you consume these oils, you're also consuming glyphosate and herbicide, which is a whole other uh, topic. But the point that I want to make is that these are like grain oils, or they call it vegetable oils, but they're really grain oils. And this can convert into another fat called GLA. Uh, you can also get GLA from borage oil, evening primrose oil, black currant seed oil. And this is good for inflammation, skin health, allergies, and many other things. Okay, then this can also convert to uh, arachidonic acid. There's another fatty acid, which is a kind of a, a building block of something called prostaglandins. Let me explain what that is. That is a body chemical that is involved in inflammation. So it actually helps heal the body in areas of injury and infection. So if someone is taking an aspirin, for example, because they have inflammation or they have pain or whatever, they're blocking this body chemical right here. So that's how that works. So some people say, well, you need to avoid arachidonic acid. Well, you just need to realize that if you avoid this, you're blocking also the healing of these of whatever's going on in the body as well. So we have to kind of understand why the body is inflamed. Now, the real big thing that you need to understand about these fats is that an average American consumes 20 times more omega-6 fatty acids than omega-3. Now, the other thing you need to know is that when you are heavy on the, uh, these fats right here, omega-6, this fat competes with ALA. In other words, if they're both present in the diet roughly about the same time, this will take um, priority. So this will block the absorption of this. And because you go to the grocery store and everything is like omega-6 fatty acids, everything's corn oil, soy oil, canola, and salad dressing and mayonnaise and all sorts of things, um, an average American is very deficient in this fatty acid right here, omega-3. So what kind of symptoms are you gonna get if you're deficient? Well, number one, your IQ is going down. You're not going to be able to learn. You're going to have problems with the brain, retina, vision. You're probably going to wear glasses. You're going to set yourself up for heart problems, blood pressure problems, inflammatory conditions of the heart. Your overall mood will go down, uh, depression, anxiety, uh, decreased sperm count, a lot of skin issues. Dry, scaly skin is a real common symptom. So over the last, I would say, 40 years, there's been a huge spike in the consumption of sugar, but there's also been a huge consumption of the, the omega-6 fatty acids right here uh, because certain organizations have been telling you to substitute the saturated fats, which by the way, 98% uh, of all the fats that make up the body are saturated fats, FYI, as a side note. So what has happened is we lowered the saturated fats and we replaced them with the vegetable oils spiking the omega-6 and then decreasing the omega-3. If you're on the ketogenic diet and you're consuming a lot of nuts and nut butters and seed butters as your snack and flax or chia or hemp, whatever, and you're not consuming these fish oils or fatty fish or grass-fed meats in certain amounts, you too can uh, be deficient in these right here because uh, the conversions are very, very small. Um, so if you're noticing that your skin is rashy, it's kind of like um, um, kind of red, rashy, and, and it's flaking, it's peeling, um, it could be a keto rash coming from these deficiencies of omega-3 fatty acids. So start to add more fish oils and fish into your diet and don't just you know fill up on peanut butter all the time. Okay, so I hope I didn't confuse you too much, but there you have it, essential fatty acids. Thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis, how about that?